Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Kane Sports Inside the Lions. As today we go inside NIL with John Ruiz, with agents Drew Rosenhaus and um, and Malki Kawa, and the Ruiz family in general, talking about why these deals are coming together with 20 new NIL deals in the process of happening in about a 24-hour period. That's going to greatly benefit uh, the University of Miami football program, the players involved, and ultimately the community. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com, joined right now by the man himself, John Ruiz, and uh, we'll be bringing in some special guests here momentarily. But John, just as an opening to the show, um, talk a little bit about what you're doing right now with these 20 NIL deals and, and why you've chosen to endorse these Miami football players. So first of all, good afternoon, Gary, and, and to all those that are watching. Um, I think it's important to understand the general platform of what we have created and what we think about. And this just doesn't deal with sports by itself. You know, these players are on the field a certain number of hours and on practice, but there's life, you know, outside of that. Uh, we as a family don't really have much to provide by way of input as it relates to the play of the game. Uh, but we certainly think we have a lot of input as it relates to, you know, improving the lives of a lot of these youngsters. And while we talk about football, this isn't just football. Uh, this is going to extend into every sport for the University of Miami because uh, we firmly believe that, you know, female sports are, are, are a place where we want to put our efforts into. Uh, we want to make sure that the university has a stronger uh, support system uh, for female sports. Uh, and while we talk about the University of Miami, our vision also is to improve the lives of those you know, kids that, that play sports in the high schools here, because those are the kids that we should try to be keeping here with, within our own backyard. Uh, you know, a lot of kids go to college and they go away for that experience, that college experience. But the reality is that, you know, home is home. And there's no reason why we have such talented athletes here and they're going and uh, to other places simply because we're not providing them what we should provide. And then providing it's not just money, right? Money comes and goes and people perhaps, you know, focus on the money. And yes, it's great where you're in college. And I know that everybody's, you know, having a hard time while they're in college. But I think it's unfair also that the University of Miami, for example, has a certain tuition and you can go to some state schools and you don't have to pay that tuition. And that creates an un unequal playing field. And there should have been no reason why people's name, image, and likeness should not have been compensated for. Because when you really think about sports, you're dealing with your physical body. And I remember my dad taught me, you know, your physical body starts to deteriorate. You have injuries, have a number of different situations that may cause those kinds of situations. Um, I and my own family, you know, both my boys played baseball at the University of Miami. And I saw the injuries. You know, my younger boy had Tommy John uh, surgery as a pitcher, and my older boy didn't end up having Tommy John, but, you know, his career pretty much ended as a result of a, of a UCL injury. So one of the things that people need to understand, this may be the only opportunity for these players to, to receive compensation. And why shouldn't they receive compensation? Uh, you know, done right in the right way. Now, Gary, one thing, you know, and I want to clear up what the law really is as it relates to NIL. Uh, because this isn't the wild, wild west. You know, people make comments that aren't lawyers, that don't really understand the law, and I want to clear that up. As a matter of fact, uh, because of everything that's transpired, I have actually hired an outside law firm, even though we have, in my opinion, some of the best talented lawyers in the country. I've hired an outside law firm to give us an outside opinion just to confirm and solidify what we already know. Um, when you look at what we do, we do it all in confines within the structure of the law. That is why uh, about a week ago, I sued the NCAA and the FHSAA because a lot of these laws aren't really solidified in the court system. And, uh, you know, I can talk about that a little bit more, but I, I want to make sure that, you know, you direct, you know, where you want to go uh, with what we're discussing. But I think of, of, of most importance is to make sure that we clear up how these laws are supposed to work how the process and the system is supposed to work. Because I want to personally make sure that people are at, at ease as far as what we do. <clears throat> and one of the main things that people need to understand, all of these contracts that we're entering into, these are handed to the University of Miami, and they have to look at them. And they have to make sure that those contracts don't 
uh, impact, interfere, or otherwise conflict with what the student athlete has to uh, provide to the university. And we're very mindful of the time that these athletes have to put into whatever we do on our end. So we're, you know, we, we try to stay away completely from the university because there has to be a line of demarcation. Uh, and one of the things that I try to do, which I think is the, 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 the gray area, is we're focusing on kids that are already at the University of Miami because it is only those that haven't committed and haven't made a decision to go that you become more questionable as to, well, why did they go to the University of Miami? We're dealing with the players that are there. Nobody could ever say that, you know, any of these NIL deals steered them there. And one of the things that the law doesn't really spell out is can you do something to keep the players there? So I'm mindful of that, even though it's not in the law, we're not doing anything. This is, you know, this is a free country. Players can move in and out as they deem fit. And by the same token, even though we're focusing on Dade County, uh, we are here to help student athletes. You know, uh, you got a guy like Duke Johnson that played at the University of Miami. Uh, you know, he's he's a guy that's at the Dolphins now, and I'm and I'm tr- speaking with with the uh, Rosenhaus group because I'd like to bring him in. It's not just for you know college athletes. I think this is a really good push, a really good move. Uh, in the last 24 hours, I've made you know a lot of contacts with all the hospitals uh, around this county because there's nothing like putting a smile on kids' faces that have different diseases and conditions. And one of the things that players need to understand, and this is what I, where I think we come in, right? Is they, they're role models. Uh, And they need to make sure that they understand that they're role models because what they do transcends into what other kids and they're maybe playing, you know, in, in in little league football, Uh, they, that different levels, you need to understand that that's really what's most important about this. All right, we're going to get into all that here as we go forward in the show. Um, But I wanted to bring in first uh, Drew Rosenhaus from uh, Rosenhaus Sports and um, Malki Kawa from First Round Management, um, who are part of this whole change in what's going on in college athletics and the opportunities that are being made available to athletes. And uh, guys, welcome to the show, and uh, Drew and Malki and... Um, Drew, let me start with you. I mean, you've been doing this forever, obviously. You, you know, you've got more clients in the National Football League than any agent. Um, but this NIL situation in college football is totally transforming your business as well. So, um, you know, you've got several of these players that have signed deals with John Ruiz in the last 24 hours. Take a minute and give us your perspective on the changing landscape for these players and what these deals mean to them. Well, I think the NIL is amazing. I've been an NFL agent for 34 years. And when I went to college at the University of Miami, I went to school with so many future NFL players, Michael Irvin, the Blades brothers, Bernie Kosar, Vinny Testaverde. A lot of those guys that I went to school with, they didn't have anything. And they were winning national championships and were going to be high first round picks. Uh, The NIL is incredible because it allows these young men to make money really for the first time and to do it legally and to do it properly and to learn from people like John Ruiz, to do business with John Ruiz, who's uh, a very successful businessman and philanthropist. Uh, I'm very excited for the college athlete. This opens up a lot of doors for them. Uh, You know, for a guy like Tyler Van Dyke, who's a Heisman Trophy candidate, this gives him a chance to, um, you know, make make real money, but also learn from a tremendously successful individual. Uh, John Ruiz, with his commitment to the University of Miami, he's giving the Hurricanes an opportunity to compete with schools like Alabama and LSU that have got other alumni that are getting involved. This, this is going to be very important for the University of Miami to compete. This will help Mario Cristobal and all the coaches go out and get the best players and keep the best players out of the transfer portal. So if you're a Hurricane fan, you better be very appreciative of what John Ruiz is doing, how he's not only helping these players, but he's also helping the University of Miami program in many ways, not only on the field, but off the field. And John, thank you so much for that. You're welcome, Drew. Uh, You know, ironically, I went to school with Drew. Uh, He doesn't remember me, but I remember him because he was, he's always been much more famous than I am. So, (laughs) Uh, but I did same, go to school here. Same class. <laughs> well, well, John, you're a lot wealthier than I am. So uh, you, you, you've killed it, man. My, my, my kudos to you and, and your tremendous success. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
Um, Malky, let's bring you into the conversation. First round management is obviously um, getting heavily involved in the NIL programs and with some of the Miami players. Uh, give us your viewpoint on what this means for the players, for first round management and the overall landscape of college sports in general. I mean, listen, to double back on what Drew just said, um, Mr. Ruiz is obviously uh, changing the landscape down here, not just for the University of Miami, but for the whole city of Miami. So his commitment is not just, from what I understand, just to the kids at the University of Miami, but to also kids at FIU and anyone else in South Florida. Um, and that's, that's you know, major in a big way. And that helps not just, you know, us compete against other schools, you know, from, from a, uh, a collegiate standpoint, but also just, you know, from the whole city of Miami, when you have these kids doing the things that they're doing and, and giving back to the community, I think it's an amazing uh, thing. And, and John's obviously a visionary and, and wouldn't be in the, in the position he's in if it wasn't for that. So. <clears throat> Um, I'm excited for it. I think it's great. And I think that, you know, it, it's, uh, it just goes to show you the times uh, where we're at and, and, you know, what's to come. What's it mean for the players to just have some money in their pockets at this stage of their life, as opposed to, to waiting um, till, they, till, till they graduate or having to get advances from people and things like that? What's it mean to them to have the opportunity to have money in their pockets now coming out of high school? I mean, listen, it's, it's amazing for a lot of these kids, you know, people don't understand that they go to college full time, but they also have other needs and they struggle. You know what I mean? So we're, we're watching these guys go to practice every day instead of making money. And then finally, you know what I mean? This, this change. And so for these kids now, it allows them to just go to school, play football, provide for their families. And, you know, it's an amazing thing. I think it's, a, it's been a long time coming. And uh, it's funny because Drew and I actually share the attorney uh darren heitner who actually wrote the uh the bill and he was the guy that kind of spearheaded this whole entire thing and, he, and he's you know uh, another visionary that you know saw that this needed to happen and he spearheaded it and it finally happened and, and look at it you know what i mean so um who knew that this was going to benefit the university of miami just as much as anybody drew you've represented so many hurricanes through the years i mean the, the list is endless um, i won't go through it but um what would the NIL have meant to all those guys? I mean, you know, think about some of the guys that came <laughs> to the University of Miami and the, the, the kind of money that those kids could have made in school. I mean, it, it would be enormous, right? Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, the University of Miami's had a lot of Hall of Famers and, and uh, great, great football players as much as any other program um, over the uh, over the recent decades, but better late than ever, you know? And, and college football really was a huge hypocrisy. It was... Uh, ridiculous system for for so many years that the ncaa and the universities would make millions and, and billions of dollars off of these athletes who were giving up so much um and really not getting not getting a percentage of it now now they can and thanks to uh john ruiz and and others around the country um college football is now really taking care of these players and uh, it's creating a very fair system and i think this is just a tremendous development um, guys can become professional now. They can learn about business. They can learn about these deals. They can read these contracts. They can learn from John Ruiz and his family. Um, I just think the NIL would have been unbelievable decades ago. Um, and we've been asking for years for, for players to get compensated. It's finally here and it feels great. You know, it, it feels like Christmas. Drew, how's so, it changing? Yeah, Gary, if, oh, if, I, if I can add to that, because I, I think we need to kind of like focus in on what's really going on. Um, there are a lot of monopolies in the United States of America. And what happens is that generally speaking, people are scared of monopolies. I'm a guy that's not scared of any monopoly. Uh, if you saw in the press, I, I just litigated against Florida Power and Light and was able to, to certify a case that's probably got damages of over 10 billion. I've always been fighting for the people. I've always been fighting these large corporations and people that just think that they can, you know, place their way in the lives of others. And it's just not fair. Uh, it's not fair because somebody has to stop it. So the first thing that you see when you start doing something like this is, oh, be careful within the NCAA. That's why I sued the NCAA. And we are conducting a very in-depth discovery process as to what goes on in the NCAA. It's not the other way around. It's let them be careful of what they're doing. Let the Florida High School Athletic Association be careful. See, I've litigated against these entities already. I see deep down inside. I take depositions. We're in a legal process. When you're in a legal process, the truth comes out. At least it's supposed to come out, and a lot of it does. 
So I think what people need to understand is that what we are doing, especially the way that I do it, I don't break any rules. If there is a rule and there is a law, what I did is I just filed a lawsuit to have a judge determine whether those laws are constitutional or not. That's the way that it should work. That's the way that our justice system works. I find it highly unfair that these players <clears throat> that have a name, image, and likeness that's theirs, that they can't benefit from it. Let's be realistic. You know, Justin Bieber, when he was a, a young kid, was making millions of dollars, and nobody was stopping him from doing that. Why are we picking on student athletes? Then what you create, which I think um, Malky was talking about, what is it that you create? A lot of these kids have to go out and, you know, be servers and waiters and waitresses at all levels, and you're creating a worse atmosphere and condition for them. The reason why we are doing this is because I believe that we can give with our structure, including Drew and including Malkin, and including a lot of the people that have seen this happen. And I, the last time I checked on the statistics and not to pick on, on football players, I think three or four years after retirement, a lot of the NFL football players are bankrupt. And that's a sad thing because they should be trained of, you know, how to protect and conserve their money. <clears throat> It's easy for a young kid to go out and buy a Ferrari and a Lamborghini and to be surrounded and surround themselves by people that don't understand how that works. And that is a very difficult thing to understand. Um, you know, I started with a, a credit card debt of $800 for my dad. Um, you know, when you're an immigrant, when like, like my parents were, you, you got to understand is this, you know, survivor of the fittest. You know, a lot of times, you know, we are handing things to people. And that's not what this NIL deal is about. At least my vision of this is I want to train these kids how to speak, how to dress, how to communicate, how to be good citizens, and most of all, to stay away from drugs and alcohol. I think that, you know, those are the things that really destroy human beings. I say that free time is the worst thing that a human being can, can have on their side. Most of it is not good. You got free time with money, and it starts to create a really bad atmosphere. And it takes a very strong mind to be able to do that. Look, I'm not a coach, but I've you know I've obviously coached baseball and football with my kids. But I can tell you, the mind is the most important thing that we need to make sure that these kids focus on. Because when you mentally focus on something and you have a goal and you have a drive to attain it, that's what you got to keep doing. So when I'm doing all of this and I see like, you know, everybody attacking me on Twitter and attacking my kids and everybody else, to me, that's a sideshow because those people that do that, which they, I respect that everybody has to have an opinion. I have no problem with that. I think we need to be constructive. You know, just don't criticize something else. What do you find wrong about it? Be constructive. Provide a basis for why you think it could be done better. I'm willing to listen. I mean, we don't know everything. Uh, if Malky calls me and gives me an opinion, I'll listen to him. If Drew calls me and gives me an opinion, I'm going to listen to him. And that's already happening. And I think that they have the best thermometer on all of these kids. And they can give you a lot more stories than I ever could as to how important it is to make sure that these kids are trained properly. I think Drew said something that hits the nail on the head. You can be given a lot of money at a very young age or at an older age. But if you don't have the business sense and understanding on how things work, Something as simple now as NIL. Am I a 1099? Do I have to pay taxes to the IRS from a 1099 point of view? Am I a W-2 employee? What does that all mean? That is very, very crucial and critical information in real life. We don't play life on a football field or on a baseball field all the time. These kids have a lot of things that they have to deal with outside of that. Uh, Drew, um, I know you're driving, so uh, we'll, we'll let you go soon. But... Um, how is this NIL situation going to change your, your business? I mean, are we going to see the day when Rosenhaus Sports, when first round management uh, are representing high school kids, uh, at, even before they get to college? Uh, and I know that you've also added quite a bit of staffing sure. in your agency. Yeah, um, I mean, there's no question about it that uh, – before NIL, we, we were only representing uh, draft eligible players when they would enter the draft. Uh, now you're doing marketing for players that are true freshmen, um, that are underclassmen. And uh, really, uh, I'm, I'm all for it because uh, it's an opportunity for us to help these young men. Um, some of them may not 
may not, may not play in the NFL. Some may get injured. Their career may not develop. But uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to get to know these young men and their families, um, to help them with their NIL work, to connect them with uh, great uh, people like John Ruiz and, and his tremendous family, um, and also to help the universities. You know, it's nice as agents to, to be able to give back um, and contribute. And uh, it's, it's not like we're going to be making a ton of money uh, on a lot of these NIL deals. They're not uh, guys that are getting millions of dollars in endorsements, but we're investing in their futures and we're giving back and we're helping them. And we have added a lot more staff uh, because, um, you know, we, we hired a, a young man named Bobby McCray, for example, who John has dealt with to focus on NIL exclusively because we don't want to take away from our veterans that we're doing marketing for. And we certainly want to be able to accommodate um, our clients, both NIL and, and veterans that are in the NFL. And I imagine that this is a recruiting vehicle now for you guys. Um, you know, you build relationships when they're in college and assuming they stay with you when it becomes time to go to the NFL. So um, it's a win-win in that regard, too. All right, Drew, we'll let you go. Malky, stay with us. We'll ask you a few more questions. Always great seeing you, Drew. Uh, congrats on all you're doing, and um, we'll, we'll see you soon. Drew, Thanks, thank Gary. You. John, thanks for the invite. Take care, guys. Thank you. All right, Malky, um, you know, you're – you're taking first round management and you're a growing, you're a growing business. Um, and I imagine this NIL opportunity with people like John is, is helping you guys quite a bit uh, do that. Tremendously. You know, I, I got to also shout out to uh, Dan Lambert because he was the first guy to come in and kind of do what John was doing. And John's just taking it to a whole nother level. Um, but Dan's a personal friend of mine. I, you know, obviously I'm, a lot of people know me from the MMA space and I do a lot of business with American Top Team. And we, we, me and him have been, you know, always talking about what happens if this floodgates open. And I think that this is Dan's dream come true is a guy like John Ruiz and his family. You know, how, how awesome is it that his kids play ball at the University of Miami and they're like spearheading this whole entire thing with their dad. Right. Like it's a family run thing, both life wallet and cigarette and all this other stuff. And so it, it, it's an amazing thing to sit back and watch, right? Like you get pillars of the community to get involved with these young men. And, and you know, Gary, some things that, that did, we didn't discuss when, um, uh, when you were asking those questions about NIL and how it changes uh, the game. You know how many kids I sit with and their parents and I've asked them, have you ever written a check? And their kids are 21, 20, 22 years old and they've never written a check before. Don't know how to balance a checkbook. So when you listen to John say, hey, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to teach these kids. We've taken some initiatives at my company to make sure that the guys have uh, tax preparers, um, accountants and stuff like that, that part of the NIL deal includes that so that they're able to get the advice they need and making sure they pay their taxes, learning on a business expense from a personal expense and how to write things off. It's super important. And that's what this NIL program to me is. It's not about us making money because we really don't. Um, it's really more about the relationship, the mentorship, and the guidance that you give a kid and the relationship that you build. And that's why I love this whole NIL thing. And you got to think, you know, when you can talk to a guy who owns a boat company, a law firm, uh, a tech company, uh, and multiple other things, and, and just call him and say, hey, give me some advice here. I got this kid, da, 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 what do you think? And he's like, here, just what you do. Or you call his kids, you know what I mean, who are super sharp themselves and like, hey, send that kid over to me. Let, let me. let me just sit down with him. Let me mentor myself. It's an amazing it's an amazing thing to have as an agency. And, you know, how awesome is it that it's in Miami? It's in my backyard. I'm a Miami guy. You know what I mean? Right around the corner from me. And I, I couldn't have asked for anything better. You know what I mean? What are you seeing it means for the players themselves, the, you know, the kids? I mean, how, how did, obviously, they got to be ecstatic that they finally get to have some money in their pockets. You know, you know, Gary, let me tell you something. The University of Miami football player, um, the kids today don't know the history and the tradition of 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. But they always hear about it, right? And people don't understand that Miami has never been the institution that's been like an Alabama or like an Ohio State, right? But we've always been the trendsetter. You know, when you put the fours up in the fourth quarter, that was a Miami thing, right? And, you know, we're the first school to ever have a deal with Nike that encompassed the entire campus, right? All sports, right? That's a Miami thing. People, people don't realize that. They don't know that, right? And so for us to be the caboose on this train of NCAA athletics, and to be where our facilities aren't the best and where we, you know, that's where you look at the Carol Sofers, the Dan Lamberts and the John Ruizes and his family of the world. And you say, thank you so much, because without them and even now, even more with the John Ruizes, right, we wouldn't even be the caboose. We'd be left at the station. 
You know what I mean? And they're giving the University of Miami and the, just the city of itself a lot of hope. And, and I think that, you know what I mean, it means the world to everyone. I, I can tell you, look, you know, it's hard because I'm an agent. So I represent many different guys from many different institutions. But I'm also a major fan of the University of Miami. So I know as a fan how excited I, when John, you know, and, and me started talking about suing the NCAA and Gilbert, you know, uh, being the first guy he signed, you can hear the excitement in his voice and his kids were all like super excited to go. And I'm like, holy shit, I, I think we, we finally got it at Miami. We find, you know, this isn't Nevin Shapiro. This isn't some bullshit. Like I, I want people to understand, like, I don't know why people are going at the family. This isn't, you know what I mean? This isn't that. This is a legitimate businessman who's legitimately taking his, I mean, people got to understand. He could have all the money in the world. He could just go buy another boat. He could just go buy another car. He could do whatever. And he's choosing to give it to our kids. I think people, you know, instead of bashing him, need to look at it and say, thank you very much. Because as a fan, I don't think I've ever had more hope for the University of Miami than, than I ever have today. As a business person in the game, right, representing these kids, I, I just watching these kids smile when I said, hey, like right now I had two kids in front of me, right? And I, I was on the phone with John. And I said, hey, John, I got these two kids in front of me. I, I'll cut a deal with them right now. And they heard it. And you should have seen their smiles. It was to hear, right? That's what we do it for. And, and through this process, watching that has reinvigorated me because this is this can be a thankless job sometimes, Gary. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, watching how much it's revitalized just the whole, the team, just the area, everything. You, you, you know, John, I can't thank you enough. You know what I'm saying? On behalf of, like, you know, everyone, it's, it's, it's amazing what you guys are doing. And, and uh, like I said, you know, the uh, – I, I, I only wonder what would happen if the Carol Sofers, the John Ruizes, the Dan Lamberts, and, and others all got together and really, you know what I'm saying, started well, putting stuff. I just think, well, you know, we'd be unstoppable. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you know, I, I think that can happen. You know, uh, you know, I think we can get Dan together with John. And, you know, Dan, Dan has been very vocal about his interest in recruiting other companies and other, other people <clears> in the NIL. And there's no question that they all, you know, they're not competing with each other. Like, you know, you, you and Drew, per se, are going to be competing with each other for players and to represent players. Um, John Ruiz and Dan Lambert are just local business guys that want to help kids. And, um, you know, so, yeah, there's no question that they can be brought together. Uh, and, you know, if I can help facilitate that, Malky, if you can, you know, I think we should. And, and, and I certainly would, uh, having a relationship with Dan as well. So, um, yeah, I, you, you bring up a great point. In, in that regard. All right, Matthew, we're going to let you go. We got a lot of turf to cover here, but uh, you know, thank you so much but for joining us today and bringing before, the, uh, before Malky, the before Malky, Before Malky goes, I'd like to say this. Uh, it's important for people to understand that you know, people like Malky, people like yourself, Gary, one of the things that I'm the most surprised uh, by in a very positive way is the fan support. You know, for every one person that has something negative to say, there's a thousand that have something positive to say. And, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, as much credit as people want to give myself or my family, which, you know, we thank you for that. I think it's important for Peter un to understand that we can't do this alone. Uh, you know, I got a lot of support, to be honest with you, from a lot of people on, on Twitter that are calling me constantly and being and, and encouraging and, and getting, you know, I had Alex, uh, my son, uh, Ruiz, with Dave Portnoy, and we were on a, on a Twitter call, and there was over 12,000 people at one point in time. This is how you get the word out. So some people say, well, why are you, you doing this, and why is there so much promotion about it? Because promotion is what gets you to be where you're at. That's why big companies promote their products. Because if Apple and some of these other co companies didn't promote themselves, then nobody would know about them. Look, I think, and, and you know, just to follow up on Malky, because I know he's got to go and, and you want to ask us some more stuff, Gary. I think that there is a, an enthusiasm and around this county and city, and you know, whether it's Miami and Coral Gables, like I've never seen before. And I went to UM in the 80s. This is like I've never seen anything before. I predict the Pack Stadium, the first home game here. Uh, you have to also credit the University of Miami administratively from, from the perspective of what they're doing. Hell yeah. Uh, and Hell yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, because of what we are doing, we try to stay away from the University of Miami as much as I possibly can. But, you know, I love those people. They were great to my kids. Uh, it's, a, it's a class act university. Uh, they mean well. They mean the best thing for the students. You know, their people are working around the clock just like we were. I mean, I, 
I have to speak to them just to give them the contracts for all these kids and make sure there's no conflict uh, <laughs> as it relates to that. But I think there's a lot of God bless Alexis around the way. Huh? I said, God bless Alexis. Yes. <clears throat> um, and I have, you know, listen, I, I, I am blessed as I have amazing people that work with me. Just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. unbelievable. You know, I, one of our lawyers, Alexis Fernandez was working on these contracts till two o'clock in the morning. And she was here at 6.30 in the morning. And you don't get that from people if there's no passion. You have to have the passion. Here's what I'll end uh, up saying before Malky leaves us. There's one of three things that you can do with money. You can either do nothing, you can do negative things and think that you own the world, or you can do as much as you can to give back. I've taught my kids, and I tell myself that as much as I can give back, and not just money, forget about money, because money comes and goes. You got to put in the time and effort and really mean what you say and really go out and provide a real good, solid background for these kids. You know, I see it day in and day out. And, you know, before COVID struck, I was bringing in about 30 kids, high school, college, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, law school, CPAs, doctors, uh, or would-be doctors. And we had trials here. And we were training these kids how to speak and how to be self-confident because that's what you, those are the tools you take with you you know, as you move on through life. So let's just not talk about money. The money could be good, right? So, but money's going to be spent. What do we leave these kids with as they move forward? That's what I think the entire community community should back up in, the, in this circumstance. And I know that a, 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 a guy like Malky, and I say guy respectfully, uh, feels the same passion. You can just hear him when he talks. And when we talk on the phone and, you know, my kids have that passion. That's, you know, we're doing this day in and day out. And I think that's important for people to take away from this. And, you know, once Malky uh, uh, drops off, I'd like Gary to speak about the actual law. I think there's a, there, there needs to be an understanding of how this really kind of works. Before I go, John, before I go, I just want to tell you, who cares what all the negative people say? You know what I mean? You're a smart guy. Um, you can promote this as much as you want. I'm going to promote it forever and ever. I'm not going to stop. The kids aren't going to stop. Um, this, you know, forget, listen, let's just forget football, forget money and all that other stuff. What you're doing is a good thing. Your family's doing a good thing. You guys are good people. Um, I, I've enjoyed every second I've spent with you guys. And, 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 and listen, and Alex, you know, Alex is my guy. And Johnny is Peter's guy. And our whole office is cool with somebody in your family. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you guys have always been good to us. And, you know, hopefully we know, obviously, you feel the same way about us. I just think that you got to keep doing what you're doing. It, it, change is going to come from all this. You know what I mean? And I think that um, you can go ask the University of Miami football players, Gary. And I guarantee you they're going to tell you. You know what I mean? The Ruiz family is A1 in their books. It doesn't matter who hates on them or who doesn't. They, everybody can be mad all they want. You know, people can say, well, Mal, you know, you make money from it. I don't make no money from it. I, I don't, you know, I don't charge the kids for this NIL stuff. It's more of a relationship building thing. So I just want you guys to know, like, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? A lot of people are involved in these things just to see change happen here in the city of Miami, at the University of Miami, FIU, and, and, and different institutions. And he should be commended for that, not, you know what I mean, uh, berated for it. And, uh, you know, John, and I know you've, you've been used to it anyway, you know, in business, it's like that, but it's not going to stop them. I can tell you that much. So thank you. You know what I'm saying? From from us, the oh. first round. And then on behalf of the players that you've uh, committed to, that you've already signed and all this stuff, I know that we're all excited and happy. Um, a special thanks to your kids because they've been phenomenal. Always. You know what I mean? Um, I, I mean, listen, Jerry, I can tell you they've done things for some of my clients that are not football players that, you know, I don't know if if, uh, if John wants me to say it or not, but there's things that they've done for guys. That, you know, if I sat down and just started giving you the list of stuff, um, you'd be like, holy shit. Did they? And I'm like, yeah, that was all Ruiz and his kids and stuff like that with nothing in return. There's no tweet that said thank you or or, hey, you know, uh, thanks for, for making me a cigarette. Race. No, no, nothing like that. So generous, great people that just want to see things happen the right way. And, and, and I appreciate that. So, you know, what I mean, that it should be very well uh, documented and commended for what they do. You know, I think it's I think it's the newness of it all. Uh, Miami's never had anything close to this. You know, they've watched other schools. They've watched you know Boone Pickens at Oklahoma State. They've watched Phil Knight at Oregon, and and other schools have had uh, benefactors and and people in the community that were supportive of the program. <clears throat> Miami's never really had it to this degree. When the Sofer family stepped up to to be the impetus to building the indoor practice facility, that was really the first major major um, gift that they had ever received in athletics. I mean, they had, you know, they, they had gotten a few million here. It's no excuse, there, Gary. But... It's no excuse, though. When but, I see Carol, I, I do? When I see Carol, I give her a hug. I tell Carol, thank you. 
You know what I mean? Because it, the players that I represent from the University of Miami benefited from that. You know what I mean? And then ultimately I benefit from that because it makes these players better. When I see John Ruiz, when I see his kids, I say thank you. Because instead of hating on somebody doing something, you know what I mean, positive, I, I still want to make sure we all understand. Carol Sofer took $12 million or $10 million, whatever the number was of her own money, and said, here 14, you go yeah. to the University of Miami, right? Dan Lambert went and took half a million and said, here you guys go, all of you, every one of you, get a deal, boom. And then Mr. Ruiz is already probably at that number, if not more, and said, here you guys go, and there's more to come. And, and, and we're going to hate on these people? There's no excuse. I can care less what anybody has to say. If you're mad at something he did in the past or he, he, he's brash about it or he's out, listen, I don't care, okay? They are doing for us what no one else is willing to do. And at the end of the day, instead of appreciating that, you're telling me the University of Miami fan base would rather be upset? Well, let them go be upset, okay? Because when we win a national championship and all the five stars come here because, hey, there's no difference now. The, the playing field's been level, right? Your kids come here and get better as people because of people like uh, John and his family. You know what I mean? How, how, what's the excuse? You're going to tell me because it's brand new? Listen, your arms should be wide open except, like, happy. And when you see these people, you should be shaking their hands. You know what I'm saying? And how about buying them a drink when you see them out somewhere instead of, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Because it, it's, it, you know what I mean? It, it, it's just sad. You know, no one should be hating on these people. And you know what? I it sucks that they I, do. I don't care if it's new or old, bro. I'm just telling you, I'm fired up about it because, like I said, the Ruiz family. Listen, you don't think Gilbert Frierson right now is the happiest kid at the University of Miami? You don't think yeah. Leonard Taylor right now, you know what Leonard Taylor's going to do with that money? He's got to help his mom. OK, I don't, I don't think people understand like this is the type of stuff that these guys are enabling these kids to do. You know what I mean? And so instead of hating on this stuff, why don't you go write a check? I don't, I don't listen. It doesn't have to be one of my clients. Go take care of another kid. You know what I'm saying? Don't you know, look, you want to go do documentaries and make money? Great, man. Look, take some of that money and, 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 you know, what I mean, take care of half the team. You know what I mean? Do something. But don't criticize the other guy for doing it. I just I'm not you know, I'm not a big fan of that. It, it's you know, it's not right. They don't deserve that. You know what I mean? Because, again, it's harder than money that they have. Not you or me, Gary. Follow me. So and it's, it's their ideas. It's their it's their morals. It's their uh, their uh, expertise and their mentorship, their time. The one thing that we can't get back in life, like he said, money comes and goes. But it's their time they're putting to this instead of, you know, what I mean, the next billion dollar project that they could easily be doing. I'm, I'm just you know, what I mean, it, 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 it's so it's upsetting because instead of being stupid like that, we should all be sitting there saying, hey, thank you. So how can we help? Tell us how we can get involved to help and make this better for everybody. And that's that's kind of, and that's why I'm fired up like this, because I know what Gilbert's gonna do. I know what Leonard's gonna do. Yeah, they'll go buy some clothes, but so will mom and so will so-and-so, and this rent is gonna get paid. And I know certain things are gonna get done. That's thanks to you, John. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, no one else. So for all of you hater out there, there's a thousand thank yous that come from us. So I'll leave you guys with that. I'm out of here. Right, thank you, Gary, John, thank, thank you. you. You know what I mean? You guys have a wonderful <clears throat> day. Thank you. All right, John, I'm going to bring in your son, Alex, now to join the party here. And uh, a lot of questions coming in from the fans that I want to get to as well before we go. But um, talk briefly about what Life Wallet is contracting with these players to do. So you want that from Alex or from, from me? That's up to you guys. So let, let me talk about this. That deals more with kind of the platform that we created. So... Look, Life Wallet is a revolutionary technology that was designed to, you know, either save lives or make sure that when people go to a physician, a hospital, uh, or get picked up by emergency rescue, that those particular healthcare practitioners know what the condition of that patient is from prior medical histories or from prior medications. What people need to understand is that today, uh, in the United States, we have uh, the best doctors and the doctors have the best tools, either diagnostic tools or medications. What the doctors don't have, and you, everybody no. that goes to the doctor uh, can understand what happens. You go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't have your medical history unless you've been to that same doctor. But if you as a person go to a bunch of different doctors, you don't have control of your health records. And that becomes extremely important when a doctor is going to either uh, provide you with medication or otherwise. My entire career, for the most part, I've been suing the big pharmaceutical companies that put products out into the marketplace, and then there are issues with it. People need to understand that, you know, 10 people can be in a place and take the same medication, and it'll affect everybody in a different way. 
And that is because the, the structure of each human being, their DNA is different. So what is it that Life Wanted is doing with these athletes? So by promoting the fact that Life Wallet is a life-saving uh, tool, uh, it is designed for purposes of making sure that we have everything that's available to that particular patient or to that particular athlete. And we can even study the progress of athletes through injuries and surgeries. You know, I work very closely with Dr. Lee Kaplan, who's a head orthopedic surgeon at the University of Miami. The majority of these kids getting NILs, you know, know Dr. Kaplan. He's the team doctor. Uh, and he's also the team doctor for the for the Marlins. Uh Amazing uh, individual, amazing person, human, you know, loves what he does. But he's also a guy who's got a lot of, you know, innovation in him, meaning like he, he understands what is necessary out there. So, you know, these kids can promote life on it. And this goes to families, you know, it goes to the grandparent, the mother, the children. And you understand and you take care of your health. Now, one of the things that we need to understand, Gary, is, you buy a car today and you have a problem with it, you go to the service station, they plug it into a computer, and they know exactly what the car has. They don't have that for human beings. You can't plug yourself in and figure out what you have. But this is kind of that thought process of being able to go somewhere and with facial recognition, we can understand what you have. We'll do away with the uh, requirement that you fill in paperwork when you go to the doctor. Everything's going to be known. It's blockchain technology with... Uh, very sophisticated thinking on top of it, which is a technology that we built. <clears throat> what I want to kind of uh, focus in on, and I think uh, Johnny, my, my son, is here too, so I'm going to have him join in uh, by video as well. There what I want to kind of focus in on uh, is, Gary, you know, kids aren't just going to receive money. This is not the way that it works. Kids are going to have to work for their money. We're mindful that they have to play the sport and that they have to do everything that they have to do because their time is very valuable, but we're going to work with them. We want to make them smarter, better, uh, understand about finances, understand a lot about medicine, quite frankly, because life wallet is a, is a tool that's used in medicine. They're going to understand from the ground up and they're going to be able to use this for their entire lives from here to the end of their lives and for their families. And I think that that's more important than the money that they're getting right now. I understand everybody gets motivated initially by money, but when you start to understand life and what you can get out of it besides the money, I believe that the other contributions are priceless as opposed to, you know, putting money, uh, dollar or figures on, on certain attributes of it. Okay, so what are they contracting with you to do? Uh, so they're going to they're gonna go on, uh, you know, their social media platforms. We're going to improve those because... We believe that with the time is now, there's a, a, a movement. You know, it's gone viral. Uh, these players are going to be known a lot better. So they start off with the name, image, and likeness. We're going to make that name, image, and likeness better. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to get them into all of the assets that we have. I mean, I, 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 we are part owners of Carbone, of ZZ's, of Sedell's, of Hassalon. These are restaurants. I'm bringing. Oh, my God. I can't get reservations to any of those places, yeah, John. No. <laughs> you got to talk to the right guy, Gary. <laughs> so, uh, but here I'm bringing boat races now uh, on May 7th and the same weekend as Formula One. Uh, these kids are going to be able to, one of the things that, that you know, we have uh, the, the, the privilege really of, of understanding now is the networking that we have. We, we know, and, and, you know, and hats off to my son, Alex. My son, Alex is the networker of the family. But he knows just, you know, about every famous actor, actress, athlete, and he's involved with them all the time. And, you know, to be able to meet those people, which are human beings just like we are, uh, and to be able to interact with these players, which is basically what their, their potential, you know, idols are. And then when they are now playing at a university, remember, you got the smaller and younger kids that, that are their idols. Every sports team, if you think about it, because I've dealt a lot with the Marlins before, they want to integrate people, the Dolphins, the Heat. The, you know, they want to integrate people into the community. So our outreach type of systems are, are going out to, to, to just establishing that, you know, and, and solidifying it. So you're going to improve the, the, the players' branding and yep. make their social media better. And then how are they going to use that social media to benefit Life Wallet? So they're going to post, you know, on Life Wallet. We will record certain commercials. As we transcend, the more people they have on LifeWallet, the more 
uh, it gets out into the general community and not just the community because life wallet is really uh, useful in the entire United States and Puerto Rico, but it, we're starting to talk to other countries now about it. So while they're doing that for life wallet at the same time, they're going to be known because we, we have created, you know, this huge web across the country as it relates to what we do. And we've been very fortunate through hard work and, and luck. Cause I was saying you need luck. Uh, that we were able to strike a very big deal uh, in a company that, you know, is, is you know, doing extremely, extremely well. Uh, you know, our, our law office is doing extremely well. And, you know, everybody's working hard. I don't believe in giving anybody anything without hard work. Uh, that goes for my kids that are on now. I tell them, you do not get anything unless you work for it. Um, and that's the same way it's got to be for these players. It's the same way that, you know, that we need to make sure because, that is important in our community, in our society. It's important for the universities, it's important for the, the education. It's important for uh, the entire infrastructure of what we have. We need to improve. There may be a, a, a guy in California that's doing the same thing that I'm doing. I live here. I was born here. I was born in Miami Beach. I've lived here my whole life. I've lived in Coral Gables since 1992. For those people that don't know, I've always been helping the youth, always. And I've always helped the youth and the elderly. For as long as I can remember, and and, and, to, and, and to chime in there, um, you know, some people are saying, "Oh, um, you know, you know, why now? When when we need to act fast, we've acted fast." You know, my dad also he he's not going to say it, but um, but he donated a million dollars right right away to the Surfside Collapse Case victims. You know, that was some of the first money that was used to get them back on their feet. You know, their whole life got turned upside down and, and you know, that's that's out of love for everything. You know, there's no, you know, we that, that, that that's what that is. You know, he's there to help everybody. Our whole entire family is there to help everybody. So, you know, when we need to act extremely fast, we act extremely fast. And and that is and that is the whole point of of of, of why we're, we're so passionate about the community, because we're, we're born and raised here. All of us. You know, my dad um, went to you. My brother went to you. I went to you. My sister went to you. I'm, and we've just, you know, rallied around the athletic program because that's what we love, you know, but it's, it's about the community also. And it's about bringing, you know, bringing better life to everybody around us. And I think that's part of why we want to build the stadium also, you know, because I think that, that, that if we do it at Tropical Park, we can build a whole entire community there, a whole sports complex there that will benefit not only the University of Miami, but the whole community as a whole, you know, into high school sports and different things there. And that's what it's about. You know, there, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good that we can do with money, and that's what we're so happy about, and, and so proud, and, and so, you know, we're, we're all very energetic about this, as I'm, um, as I'm sure everyone can tell. You, you two guys were University of Miami baseball players and, and, and athletes on campus. Um, talk from the uh, student athlete perspective of what NIL opportunities now mean to them. John, go ahead. Johnny, why don't you go first? Yeah, we'll let you get a word in here. <clears throat> Yeah, so as a former student athlete, I think it's important to understand that not everybody that attends UM comes from money. Uh, you know, so it's expensive to go there, especially as a baseball player. There's only 11.7 scholarships that a baseball roster is allowed to have. So what does that mean for most players? They're getting 25, 50% scholarships. Where's the rest of the money coming from? You know, they have to take out student loans. They have to pay for this education in some, you know, fashion. So... Coming from a baseball player's perspective, you see a lot of players who grow up who aren't financially able to pay for these things. And, you know, these NIL deals will, will help assist uh, pay off these either student loans or pay for the university itself or even for these players to help their families who also aren't as fortunate. So I think it's, you know, it's the right thing to do and, and to allow these players to, to, to gain access to this, you know, wealth that, you know, they're somewhat entitled to. Just like how Justin Bieber and all these, you know, other celebrities are able and these TikTokers now are making a, a ton of money. Why shouldn't an athlete be put in that same situation and, and benefit the same way? Yeah. And to, and to touch upon that a little bit, too, of, of what he's saying. So some of these football players and some of these baseball players and, and all the athletes in general are all influencers. That's that's what they are. They're influenced. They're actually probably more influential than anybody else. You know, that just, that just has a social media following because they're actually able to see them perform in the field. You're able to root for them, cheer for them. You know, it's a different bond that you get with a player when, when, when you can do that. So, you know, also we're working on five NIL deals for the University of Miami baseball team right now. 
um, five players on the University of Miami baseball team. Um, I cannot say the names yet just because we're wrapping up the deals, but that should be hopefully done either later today or early tomorrow. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do that. So that's very exciting because we're going to be one of the only baseball programs in the country to have NIL deals for the players. So that is huge. I think we're going to also get into, I wish my sister was on here to be able to tell you that because this is, you know, more what she's doing, um, which is the, uh, which is the women's sports. You know, we're going to get NIL deals for some of the, for some of the, the female athletes, um, which is phenomenal. You know, which is which is great because when you talk about you know some the the females have full scholarships, but you know we're talking about the baseball and what's so and what's so you know great about baseball is I played baseball and I'm still friends with some of the guys in the team, so I can literally see it impact their lives and and what we can do to impact their lives and bring the smile on their faces. It's just you know words cannot describe how how uh, how good it makes somebody feel when you can you know physically help somebody and and see it affect them you know firsthand. And, and Gary, I, I wanted to go back just real quickly because a lot of people have asked, you know, why now? Um, so we've been donating to the University of Miami for many, many, many years. Obviously, never at this level because we didn't have the money to donate at this level. So a lot of people talk about, you know, the people that donated before, it, which is fantastic. I mean, we have to applaud them. Uh, and we're very thankful for that. The Ruiz family comes in now. Because, again, I'm first generational wealth, you could say. My parents came from Cuba. They had no real resources. I'm the first person that ever graduated any of my family from college, much less a higher education. <coughs> I apologize. And what you really are seeing is through the last six or seven years, the company MSP has really taken off. And it's gone from one level to a completely different level now, which is the reason why we are able to do what we're doing now. So for those people that say, you know, we've never heard of you, that's not true. Johnny started playing baseball when he was four years old. At seven years of age, I still remember as if it was today, I took him to the Jim Morris baseball camp. And as of that time frame, which is now 20 years because Johnny's 27, We've always been to the baseball games. We've always been going to the football games. Uh, and we were able to do, you know, what we could do financially at that point in time. Paul was very supportive of the programs. When the, the boys were playing baseball, we were traveling with the team all the time. We have the utmost respect for, you know, the university and their program. And that's the reason why you see, you know, what you're seeing now. So, for that question of, you know, why now, why are you coming out of the woodwork, so to speak? That's the reason why, because obviously we, we made a very big deal uh, financially, and then that's what's going on. Um, a lot of questions coming in from the fans pertain to the stadium idea, uh, which obviously was kind of like your entree into the public space. You talked about building a stadium on the site of Coral Gables High School, Lejeune and Bird, and that created this huge uproar. And I got a kick out of something I saw this morning I wanted to show you guys. Um, you know, everybody made a big deal. Oh, you can't have a stadium at Lejeune and Bird. And, and I will be the first to agree there's all kinds of problems with that idea. It's probably not the best location. But then they come out with this rendering here of a parking garage that they're going to build at Miracle Mile in the middle of Miracle Mile that is this – it's it's not as big as a, as as a stadium, but it's certainly bigger than anything that we're used to seeing in the city of Coral Gables. So I I, I know I got a kick kick out of that, and um, you know, but so I guess if they want to do something no, I, in Coral Gables, they can. I, I just think people are are quick to react. Uh, that wasn't how it really happened. Uh, we started to talk about the notion. And one of the considerations amongst many was, well, how about Coral Gables Senior High School? And the reason why that came to fruition is because out of all the tracts of land around the university, because everybody was talking about, you know, students being able to walk to the actual games, uh, because when you go up north, that's what you see. A lot of the universities, the majority of the student athletes, I mean, the, the students that go see the student athletes. And... The purpose of it was to improve Coral Gables Senior High School as a school itself and add uh, some aspects to it from, from a stadium perspective. What people need to understand also is that while the game's being played, there are a lot of things that are required to set it up, 
right? So there's people on camera, there's uh, engineers. I mean, there's a lot, a lot that goes into it. Look, I can tell you, you know, luckily I, I aired the first game ever at the Marlin Stadium, which was kind of like a trial when Columbus played uh, Belen. And I was involved in that entire uh, production because I've been doing production for a long, long time. We have our own studio, which is another thing that we think we can utilize these resources very well. We produce our own content. We, we have our own fiber optics. We have a, a very sophisticated studio that we're going to be able to use for all these NIL deals, right? So we have all, our own people on staff. And what happens is that when we're talking about all these potential projects, we're looking at different types of situations, one of which is that we need to understand that when there is a student athlete, there's five or six or ten that aren't. But those guys and gals are just as valuable, right, in this whole entire process because now with these NIL deals, why not get students from the University of Miami that are on, you know, either journalism or broadcasting and really incorporate the entire community behind that? Because now you have, you know, and it's great for the fan that's going to go watch and they watch the football player. And I mean, I just think it's great all around. Um, a, a stadium, a lot of people say they like Hard Rock Stadium and, and they don't really want to see a new stadium. Um, if you were going to build a stadium at Tropical Park with anywhere close to the amenities of a Hard Rock to make the experience comparable, it's got to be probably a billion dollars, I, I, I would think. Um, are you prepared to go to that level to, to potentially build the stadium uh, yourself? Would you be looking to raise money from other people? You know, what's your thought process uh, on that at the moment? So, so that's a good question. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to my son, Johnny, right now, because he's uh, in the forefront. Uh, and we've actually already spoken to a firm. Uh, that we're working with to to create kind of like the, the the floor plan, so to speak, the design, the architecture. Uh, I agree with you, Gary. Uh, Tropical Park's about 270 acres thereabouts, uh, but the vision has now turned in from just a stadium. Uh, in my eyes, we need to move, uh, you know, Jackson Hospital, which is a trauma center, to provide more access to the helicopters. I mean, we have one of the best trauma centers in the country. But, you know, the setup, it's old, you know, the infrastructure, the fiber optics, the technology, the spacing, the access to it is one of the things that we're looking at. We're looking at building perhaps a, a, a practice um, track for Formula One. We're looking, you know, at potentially, you know, uh, men's and women's rowing for the university. We're looking at fields for uh, Dade County schools that many of them don't have football fields or baseball fields. So, you know, we're, we're willing to put in <clears throat> a substantial amount of money, but we're going to work with, you know, hopefully the University of Miami. I think they'll, they'll have open eyes and ears to it and a lot of others that want such a con kind of a, of, a, of a facility, you know, because it, it does go beyond just University of Miami. I think we need to start doing that. You know, people don't understand that public schools have really bad fields to play either baseball or football or even you know, uh, gymnasiums for basketball when they even do have them. So I think it's a much bigger project, but I do agree with you. The experience, look, there's nothing that we've been envisioning that's not going to be better than what's there. If we build a stadium, it's going to be better than Joe Robbie Stadium or, you know, Hard Rock Stadium. It's changed names quite a bit. Uh, but but I'd like Johnny to speak about that uh, because he's kind of at the forefront of, of that project. Yeah, so uh, we're looking at uh, like my how my dad said, we're, we're going to do an entire complex that is uh, going to help the community, I think, in, in a way that, that no one really has envisioned a project like this. So we're going to have uh, fields for public high schools to be able to use for just people in the community to be able to go and access and, you know, maybe on a Monday night or Tuesday night play in flag football, which I play uh, at Red Zone right now at Tropical. So I'm very familiar with uh, how the park is set up and how everything works there. Uh, so something like that to improve that location. I believe the basketball courts there and the tennis courts there aren't, you know, the best that they could be. So the entire atmosphere of that park will be changed. And we're going to add, you know, public uh, hospitals to help people in the community be able to get better medical care and quicker care and better care and just in general. And then in terms of the stadium, I mean, Hard Rock is an older stadium and they re uh, obviously they, they redid it and, and super nice. 
but uh, I don't think that that you know the amenities there are that uh, unsurmountable and something that we could do. Uh, and and again, this stadium will be state of the art. We're talking to the people that have built the nicest stadiums in not only the country but the entire world. So the project will obviously meet that criteria because if not, they wouldn't accept the project at all. So uh, you know the biggest firms in the world are looking to work with us on this project, and the stadium will for sure at least be equivalent to Hard Rock, if not better. Hey, John, um, a lot of things that I've been seeing come up in the couple of weeks since you and I first met. And, you know, we saw the sparring matches with Billy Corbin and some other people on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, people seem to think that they they work for your accounting firm and, you know, they're, they're, they're counting your money, they're they're making judgments on how much money you have, what you can afford to do. Uh, and I've been consistently saying that nobody really knows that and it's not really fair. Um, but I think that just from my, you know, outward perspective that a lot of people, they don't really understand the world necessarily that, that people with money live in the, the depth of the business deals um the the complexity of them how things can change in midstream a lot of people point to your deal back uh, about a decade ago in homestead uh that it, it looked to me and in, in, in you know and i remember from back then um that you it, and correct me if i'm wrong it looked like you went into it with certain intentions and the landscape changed a little bit and you had to adjust the midstream and maybe some feathers got ruffled and things like that and uh when you're transacting business at the millions of dollars of level, uh, when you're working as an attorney and you're suing Florida Power and Light and you're suing other people and you're involved in litigation with other attorneys, uh, everybody's not going to be your friend for life. This isn't like BFF. You know, th th this turns into killer whales going at each other's throats sometimes. Sometimes. So, can you put a little perspective on that for us? Um, just on, you know, you chose to bring yourself to the forefront here and 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 become more of a public figure in the community than than you've probably been for the whole segment of your life preceding this. And you know, that's come with pluses and minuses. Give us the perspective on that and um, just how you feel about how this has evolved. So I would say that from a localized view. Uh, you're probably right, but I've been litigating in very large cases, you know, since I was in my 20s. Uh, so I did the Fenfen case. I was involved in Ford Firestone rollover. I was involved in Viox. I've been involved in all the biggest litigations nationwide. So nationwide, my name was known, but it's known by professionals, you know, in the industry at a different level. Uh, now we're just talking about overall the community. I can tell you that even the project that we did before was extremely successful. But what happened is, like, unfortunately happens in many situations. Uh, it was government interaction that caused it to have issues. Because if you recall, the mayor of the city of Homestead got arrested. There are a bunch of issues. Uh, the commission, they call them council, council members there. There was a bunch of issues that, you know, were caused by the city itself and, and, the, and the people running the city. <clears throat> so this is a different level um you know what what i could say is the the level of wealth that we've been able to attain is you know at a completely different level it's you know thousands and thousands and multiples of what i've ever had before uh, and therefore and it's also divided in between law firm and you know a company that's you know, set to go public, you know, in a very short order now, in a couple of weeks, perhaps maybe no more than 30 days. But we've already been able to attain with the business itself. Uh, you know, luckily, and like mm -hmm. you know, would, it's a business worth billions and billions of dollars. And we only just have one business, we have multiple businesses. So, um, you know, we feel very comfortable in terms of the of what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're able to donate the way that we're able to donate. Um, I didn't choose the, the, the situation that we're in. I'm trying to help. And, you know, in the, in the help process, uh, you know, I made my, my entire career from pretty much marketing the services that I was able to provide to clients. And if you don't market yourself, you don't get any clients. 
And what I think is that from a marketing perspective, because you can't go out to players and tell them, hey, go to the University of Miami because this is what you're going to get in return. You got to create an atmosphere that people want to come. That's why when you when you travel, people want to go to a place. You go to Disney World, you know, they're creating a place where people want to go to. We need to create here at the University of Miami and the city of Miami, which is now the epicenter of technology. We need to want people to come here. We can't force them to come here, but people want to come here on their own. I think Mario Cristobal uh, coming into the university was a humongous game changer, much more than anything I could ever do because people believe in him. He's a real guy. He's, you know, no nonsense. Uh, you feel the energy. You feel it when he speaks. You understand he's going to get the job done. If anybody deserves credit in this equation, I would say it's the people that are running the university and being able to do what they needed to do to get Mario Cristobal here. Because no matter how many NIL deals, you know, we could put together, I think, you know, the sort of like almost like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Daniel, that red nose is Mario Cristobal. He's the guy really that people are saying, man, I want to go there. You know, the players want to go for him. Forget about an NIL deal. You know, you can get an NIL deal now probably anywhere else in the in the country, I would suspect. But that's not what's driving this. What's driving this is the fans, the people, the energy, the excitement, and, and people understanding that, you know, the U is back. And that swag that we had in the 80s and that swag that we had in the 90s. And, you know, look, University of Miami logo, in my opinion, is like the Dallas Cowboys in the, in the you know, professional level. The University of Miami has been branded when i traveled with my kids for baseball you see people all over the place with a uh, um you know attire it's a recognized brand <clears throat> it is where people want to go it is the number one place that people would want to be associated with and we dropped off just simply because maybe we weren't you know driving the the the, the car the way that we should have been now we realize that we lost control of the car and now we're you know, going back to what we should have been doing. So I think to, to clear that up, Gary, you know, I can't do this by myself. My kids can't do this by ourselves. We need a guy like you, Gary. We need the people that, that support the program. We need the fans to go out. We need the, the players to play hard. But I got to I gotta guarantee you this. You got a player that's playing for the University of Miami this coming season. Man, they have a, 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 big, a, a big shoes to fill. They now know that, that they're on the line. Again, I'm predicting sellout crowd at least game number one because the amount of excitement that exists is crazy. I already have been contacted by a lot of people I know across the nation, you know, wanting to fly in. When is this happening? You know, when's the first game? That's going to be crazy. Um, I'm, we talked about Dan Lambert earlier in the show. Um, he was kind of the, the pace setter on this NIL. He did a deal last year, a half a million dollars, gave every player uh, on the team 6000 Last year, he's going to come back with more this year. And we talked about bringing the two of you guys together into a unified effort. And uh, I just want you to know I deliver on what I promise. So here he is driving around South Florida in his car, Dan Lambert himself. Um, you, you've probably seen him on the uh, the wrestling broadcast. He's uh, the most hated man in America in the world of professional wrestling, but uh, very much beloved in the University of Miami community is the guy that set the, the table for what's coming now with NIL with you guys. So John, meet Dan, Dan, meet John. And uh, thank you, obviously, for what you're so, doing for the, for the U. So I, ironically, we've already met. Uh, so we were together, I don't know, maybe four months ago, Dan, three months yes. ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, great thing that Dan's done, you know, again, you know, hats off to him. Uh, he quite frankly had a more difficult job than, than I could ever have. Uh, because he kind of put this together and, and you know, we, 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 we spoke about just this is happening now because he understood the landscape, uh, you know, and, you know, doing it from, from the place that he was coming at, meaning like, you know, he put his heart into it. Uh, big time believer. So, again, we, we have all the respect for Dan. And, you know, there's there, a lot has to be said for trendsetters. Uh, and he was the guy that, you know, that took that first step, that first major step, uh, because when people take first steps in the back of their minds, they always have to think of, you know, am I doing the right thing? Are they going to go after me? Why am I doing it? Because that's just all the community that we live in. So, uh, then, you know, 
uh, all all the due respect that you deserve for sure. Well, Dan can tell you a little bit about that because the NCAA uh, dropped somehow something leaked or whatever that, that the NCAA wanted to look into Dan's um, American Top Team deal, where he did a similar thing. He contracted with the players to do social media posts, personal appearances, um, uh, that that sort of thing, and. Um, you know, so, so Dan, you could speak from experience a little bit about, about that. And um, just tell us how, how, how do you feel the first year of NIL went? Well, I mean, obviously it has to be talked about in, in terms of how the team produced on the field last year. And I had high hopes about making a little bit of a splash last year, trying to be one of the first ones to get involved in it to try to set a little bit of a precedent and get, get some buzz around the University of Miami's program. But – you know, in the context of how the season went, it kind of fizzled out fairly quick because it's hard to go out and try to get people excited to come on board when the team isn't producing on the field. And, you know, early on in the season, we had our we, we had some speed bumps to be sure. But I'm sitting here pitching myself, just wondering if I'm still in a dream, because if you had told me here that you know I'd be sitting here right now with, with the school making a, a complete 180 as far as their dedication to the program and what they're going to put in as far as resources and, and guys like like you gentlemen right now stepping up and doing what you're doing and assembling a team uh, a coaching staff like they're assembling right now and the buzz around this team and the excitement in the community I'm just I'm like a kid in a candy store right now I just I can't believe how excited I am for the future of this team it's just it's just sky's the limit I've I've been miserable for almost 20 years, jealous at other teams and other programs and what kind of resources they threw into, you know, into their football programs and the, the, just how dedicated they were to, to, to getting the right people involved. And I've always thought, gosh, if we just had half of that at the University of Miami, considering the geographic endowment we have with respect to where we're located and the fertile recruiting grounds that we're in, gosh, what could we be? And man, it just seems like it's kind of coming together. So you know, I'm I'm pretty pleased with where it is right now, and and to see guys like you guys involved is just it's almost like a dream come true to me because it's you know the, the school can do all they can, but if they don't get the support of the community behind them, there's only so much they can do, and to get the support of of gentlemen like yourselves and this the scale in which you do seem to do everything you guys do it on, it's a sky is the limit for this team, and there are some bright days ahead for UM. Uh, Gene Kassain, one of our viewers, is asking the question, how do you guys get other people involved? Dan, you started Bring Back the U uh, specifically to do that. Um, with guys like John coming in now, uh, I guess on his own, but how do you expect this to impact getting other local business people uh, involved in this these NIL programs? Um, you know, again, I, I go back to what, what I said early on about just the buzz around the program in general and, and if things were, were going in the same direction that they've gone in the last 10, 15 plus years, it, it was going to be an uphill battle. Um, I thought if I could just go on and help each kid a little bit and give a little bit back to the kids that are giving so much to us, you know, at, at least at the end of the day, that, that would be something good and, and, and could make me sleep a little better at night and maybe make the coaches' jobs a little bit easier. Um, but when you, when you see that the direction the team's now going on, I think nothing can bring our community together more than UM football. I mean, forget about the divide that exists in our everyday life with politics and everything else going on right now. Nothing will bring a, a city together, especially a city like Miami, than a winning football team. And so, if we can recreate some of the history that we had in the past, I think people are going to jump on. People are going to get excited. We're talking to a lot of people right now about coming on board and helping out and contributing um, to, to our NIL deal. And if we can augment some of these big deals that seem to be going on right now from, from John, it's just, uh, I, I just think it's a great thing. I, I, I'm just, like I said, I'm a kid in a candy store. I couldn't, couldn't be any more pleased and excited about the future. So Gary, um, you know, uh, here's what I'll say. And I think to kind of echo what Dan said, the one thing you know is that when you go to a University of Miami football team, it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an independent. And by the way, I hate politics, so just so that the record's clear on that. Um, or you get a guy like Gene Kassane, who, you know, I have all the respect in the world for him. Gene Kassane is at a law firm, and maybe 30% of my cases uh, are defended by his firm. 
Uh, but he's a great supporter. He supported it on Twitter. I've known him for a long, long time. Not so much personally, but I know of him, and we've known each other. We're you know on opposite sides of a profession. But when we go at, at, you know to Hard Rock or we talk about the University of Miami, our interests are aligned. And everybody that goes there, that's what what UM football does. You know, it puts people together, even though you may have divergent interests or or you know beliefs. And I think that that's what's super, super strong about this. And if there's anything that, you know, Dan uh, should be proud of and that we feel that we're proud of and that everybody that's in this movement is we're bringing people together. We're pre not only bringing people together, but putting the, the word out also. Because, look, there are defining moments in people's lives. And you either go left or right or you keep going moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that, too, the worst thing, in my opinion, of what's going on in our community is alcohol. Some kids are starting to drink at 12, 13 years of age. And, you know, it seems like alcohol is somewhat socially accepted. And therefore, you see a lot more of it. We have drugs, but since they're not socially accepted, they're a little bit more, they're done more, you know, behind the scenes. We got to try to remove, you know, the, the drinking and the, and the drug consumption because that really affects people's lives at very many different levels. And it affects a person's life, but... It's hard to sometimes have a family member or an entire family that doesn't have some issue with that, right? So I think that's very important. Uh, and John, Dan will tell you, don't worry about the criticism or, or the hate that, that you're getting. This is a guy that walks into arenas and has 15,000 people standing there screaming at him, screw Dan Lambert, and maybe you know some other things as well. And Dan the greatest moment of your life, right? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you one thing. You talk about the hate level that was directed at the University of Miami back when we were winning five national championships. If we can get back to that hate level, we are doing something right. So I say bring it on. <laughs> and if anybody wants to be entertained, go on YouTube and search Dan Lambert uh, Wrestling, and uh, you can fill about an hour of your time watching some of his wrestling videos. They're just absolutely awesome. Well, Dan, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for all you do. And we look forward to continue following your efforts for the University of Miami. Thanks for having me. And John, and to your two sons, thank you so much for jumping on board this train. I think you guys are going to lead us in the right direction. And anything we can do to follow along and, and, and augment it, I think there's going to be some other people that are willing to jump on too. But uh, m much respect and much appreciation for what you guys are doing because it's on a big scale. And, and, and this is exactly what University of Miami needs. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, Dan Lambert. Um, so, guys, let's um, let's pull this all together and and, and wrap it up. Um, you know, I think we've covered pretty much every area. We've talked about the process of NIL, how you guys do these contracts. They get submitted to Miami Compliance, which has to sign off on them and and make sure they're legit and that sort of thing. And then there are contracts between you and the players. And your payments go directly to the players and, and they're responsible to you for, for what they're expected to do within those contracts. And that's how those relationships work. And um, so, so I would say, Gary, that you know, this is a, a great <clears throat> opportunity to clear up the law. And I'm, I'm going to try to explain to make sure that it provides people with an understanding <clears throat> and at the same time, some comfort level. So you have the NCAA. Uh, the University of Miami is a school within the NCAA. It's a Division I school. The NCAA has about 350 Division I schools that are members of that particular organization. The NCAA before had laws that prohibited players from receiving compensation. And one of the issues that, that, that surfaced as a result of lawsuits, because, you know, people don't understand, just because there's a law doesn't mean that you can't challenge the law. So the NCA creates regulations, but they're not the ultimate authority. The legislature creates laws. They're not the ultimate authority. So you usually need to have an interaction between the different laws and the people that those laws affect with lawyers bringing those issues before a court of law to determine whether or not that law uh, is a law that violates constitutional rights, violates the freedom to contract, and a bunch of other things, right, that are legal concepts. That's why we have three divisions of government. We have the executive, 
the judiciary and the, and the legislative branch. What has happened is that laws were created by these organizations, which are deemed to be monopolies, and nobody really challenged them. By challenging them, the courts determined that some of the things they were doing and the regulations were inappropriate. <clears throat> That's the NCAA. What's happening now is that the NCAA operates at a nationalized level because all 350 schools that are under it have to abide by their rules. But in addition to that, you have issues which here in Florida, it's the Florida High School Athletic Association. So what happens if a kid right now, for example, <clears throat> is committed to a university, already finished their football season, because now the football season is over for this school year. Those kids technically cannot sign an NIL deal until such time as they actually get to a university because they technically can be deemed ineligible to play at the high school level. Now, does it mean anything? Maybe not, because if they become ineligible and they were only playing football, then that's the only part that it affects, right? But do you want, as a player, to have to fill out an, a job application or anything else that states that you were deemed ineligible and you technically violated the rules? No, I would never counsel anybody to do that. So one of the issues that we brought before the court now with the lawsuit that we have is, can high school players receive compensation for name, image, and likeness? Can the Florida High School Athletic Association have rules and regulations that prohibit athletes from receiving compensation, which college had before, and those were deemed to be inappropriate uh, or, or laws that did not play a role in, in our system today, right? Our system of ju jurisprudence. Then <clears throat> there's a Florida law that states that you can't sign a contract for a longer period of time than you're going to be at a particular university. How does that make any sense? If I just became a freshman at a university and I'm able to sign a 10-year NIL deal and next year I could get injured, but I already solidified my right to collect because of A, B, or C, why are you limiting me to just have a four-year contract or a three-year contract? So there are a lot of nuances that are happening right now that need to be challenged to determine where we really should be at, right? So there are a lot of, you know, constitutional protections on the right to contract, uh, how monopolies can impose, antitrust laws. There's a lot of things going on at the same time. <clears throat> what bothers me is I hear a lot of these people talking, and particularly, you know, you name uh, Corbin and, and you know, from the Lebatard uh, show and, and this Havenick gentleman, which I, I don't never met. Nothing against them personally. What I would just say is those guys don't know the law. They don't know how it operates. They've never been in a courtroom. They don't know, and they don't have the 40 lawyers that we have internally here. So they start just pretty much yapping away at things that they have no clue about. Um, the one thing that's clear, which is the reason why I, I do not like to make an NIL deal with any student athlete, and where you really have to be careful is where that athlete has not made a decision to come to a particular school. Because it is only then that somebody could say, well, you tried to give him a deal so that he could attend the University of Miami. And it's <laughs> happening out there. That's happening at but some schools. That's exactly why I'm giving deals to the players that are there now. Nobody could ever say that the Ruiz family <clears throat> tried to get somebody to go to the University of Miami. These guys are already there. Now, I and I will tell you bluntly, because I have nothing to hide, I would never tell a kid, to come to the University of Miami simply because they're going to play a sport and we want them and they're a great athlete and it's going to be great for the university. Because that's not the right thing for the kid. It may be that kids are better off at a different university. And what we need to do in our communities, even if kids are here, we need to be supportive. Because at the end of the day, life isn't about football. Life is about life. And if we think that a, that a student athlete is not going to do well in the University of Miami program, then maybe it's better off that they go somewhere else. And we should still be supportive, right? Now, that doesn't mean I don't want to do any NIL deals that's not within our community. I'm about our community. I can't cover the whole United States. Other guys in those communities can do for their community. We're doing here for our community. Hats off to the people that do it for Alabama or Texas. They want nothing different than what we want, right? Everybody wants a winning team. So 
Nobody wants to have a losing sports team or a losing collegiate team or one that's not at the, at the highest level, right? So everybody's fighting for their own sort of home turf. But for people to come out, they have no knowledge of how the judicial system works and just start talking about how it should be. And if there's one thing that I, that I tell my kids and, and that we pride ourselves on is we try to do absolutely everything by the book because you can you can do very well and do things right and sleep comfortably at night if you're doing the right thing. And that's why I don't really care to be out public because I have nothing to hide. I know exactly what I'm able to do and what I'm not able to do. And that's why I also try to stay away from the university. And unfortunately, I would not like to because I have a lot of friends there. My kids play baseball there. And I, I've created relationships with the University of Miami. But unfortunately, because of the situation we're in, I never want the university. Well, we've never donated money either to to earmark and tell the university what they should do, even though that's not improper illegal. But there's got to be autonomy by the university. We want to make sure that everybody you know, is, is happy and comfortable with it. And even though we're here because the main thrust of this is the University of Miami, I'm going to help kids out in FIU. I'm going to help kids out, even if they're at Miami-Dade Community College. They're at Barry College. I've already committed to to help out some kids at St. Thomas University. So this is more of a community project. I've already donated to a number of the baseball teams, you know, in, in high school baseball. We're going we're gonna to start scoring all the high school baseball games. We're going to start scoring all the high school football games. You know, we're going to be entrenched in this to the point where everybody really understands what's going on. And I think that's really positive. The, you know, you talked about uh, the, the, the book and, and like the, the book is constantly moving. Like, you know, the NCAA doesn't know what to make of this NIL. And, you know, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, there, there's going to be people out there that are going to stretch the boundaries to to the nth degree. I mean, there were there was a thing in Texas where uh, offensive line yeah, recruits sure. got NIL deals before they, like you said, before they were even on campus and things like that. Um you know, Mario was very successful with Phil Knight of Nike in building an NIL program at Oregon, which the NCAA is now, you know, you know, one, you know, questioning certain things of and stuff. And it's like, you know, nobody really knows what the rules are. Uh, nobody knows what the book is, but the NCAA knows that they want to look into it because they're they're trying to define, you know, what it is. So yeah, but that, but, but I think that's the 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 the, the part that I tell everybody to take a step back is who's the NCAA to be investigating all these things? Let's investigate them. I guarantee you, which is what we're doing, by the way, we're going to be investigating what they're doing because if you're going to apply policy, you better apply it equally to everybody. The problem is that people are scared of the NCAA and they're scared of the FHSA and they're scared of Florida Power and they're scared of everything. And then when you're scared, you do nothing, right? It's like a deer caught in the headlights. Stop being scared of all these people. These people have to abide by the same rules, laws, and regulations that we do. When you go into a court of law, everybody's at an equal playing field. And what I say is game on. Bring it on. Bring it on. I know that, you know, when you're in the right and you had the right tools and the right law and you process things properly, that's the way I've made a living in my career. I sue big companies. I sue much bigger companies than the NCAA. These are all multi-billion companies that think that they can't lose. And they lose just like everybody else because they don't always do the right thing. And I'm not saying that they're doing something wrong because, uh, but I can tell you, I've litigated them with, 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 against them before, and I've litigated against the FHSA. I'm not scared of any of them. Uh, you know, they have lawyers just like we do, and we're going to duke it out in court. I think right now, what I will tell you is that the the way that the Florida High School Athletic Association is doing things is unconstitutional. It violates the rights to contract. Uh, a lot of those statutes will not. Uh, uh, you know, stand judicial scrutiny. And that's what we're going to push for. Uh, and for people to c continue to be scared of the NCAA. Look, I'm not associated with the school. So it's the school that needs to abide by the NCAA rules. And the athletes that are in that school need to abide by those rules. I'm not going to facilitate for the school or an athlete to violate any rule. What I will do is I will challenge the rule and I'll continue to abide by the rule until we get a judicial declaration that they are wrong and we are right. And right now what we're doing, everything is within the confines of the rules and regulations that exist. The NCAA cannot provide a moving target. Uh, and the NCAA also knows that if they push the envelope, you know, a lot, 
they stand to perhaps lose because people can start opting out of the NCA and creating other structures. You know, that's just not the way that it works. Look, you know, times have changed also, Gary. <clears throat> when when the University of Miami in the 80s, you know, was winning all these, you know, championships and, and, and we were like the swag team. There was no social media. Uh, if I recall correctly, cell phones started around that time frame. We're in a different day and age and everything's entirely different. Um, information travels now beyond quick. I mean, every, every one of us that has a cell phone gets, you know, breaking news or, or CNN or Fox or Law 360 and you're constantly being pumped with information. That's the same reason why things become viral. And that's the same reason why the <clears throat> name, image, and likeness of a player today is a lot more valuable than before. Because before it was kind of restricted to the television channels. And, you know, Gary, you seem to be around the same age as I am. Back when we were growing up, there was three or four channels. And they didn't even have cable TV. And they didn't have, you know, all the channels. Now I think you have thousands of channels. You can't keep up with it. So the, the world has changed, but the NCAA rules and all that have not changed. And, you know, you need to change with the times. Uh, Johnny Ruiz, any uh, parting thoughts? No, I agree. I think that uh, there's obviously a lot to, to learn from all these litigations that are going to ensue in the, in the coming, uh, you know, probably months, if not years, because these things take a long time to kind of flip out. But, um, you know, in, in terms of the high school uh, issue with the FHSA, Again, what's the difference between a student athlete and someone who is like a Justin Bieber or a TikToker, right? Uh, you know, everyone should be put on the on the same playing field and and kind of, you know, the FHSA has singled out, uh, you know, just athletes in general. Uh, so I think that that's something that will, you know, we'll, we'll be seeing in the next couple months and years and something that will obviously change, change the landscape of of how these, you know, NIL deals will be, you know, structured moving forward. Yeah, what's the difference between a 16-year-old pop singer and a 16-year-old high school football player? Uh, there, there really is, is no difference. Only, one, Ruiz, difference. You uh, only one difference, that the FHSAA has rules that don't allow those people to be compensated, or if not, you can't play, and there's no rule prohibiting somebody else from making money. That's completely unfair. But if, if it's my kid, I'm, I'm with you 100%, John. I mean, it, it, it's, it's outrageous. It, when you put it in these terms, and uh, I'm sure that a, a court of law is very soon going to do something about that. Um, Alex, any parting thoughts from you? No. So, I mean, I think it's great to have um, a powerful, and, and what I think everybody needs to understand is that it's 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 a blessing that you know somebody like my dad is able to use his legal knowledge that he's had for you know over 30 years of practicing law, um, you know, at the highest stage in highest courts. To come and look at to come and look into what we can do, you know, and look into how we can structure things and look at things. Um, you know, we're we're here. I'm I'm a businessman, so you know, I know the business side of it all. It's all great for business, but you know, when it comes to when it comes to how to structure things and doing things the right way, you know, I turn to my dad to tell me, hey, you know, he's the attorney. He, he has all the experience with this. You know, is this legal? Is this not legal? And everything we're doing is by the book. You know, that's what that's kind of what I wanted to to portray again is everything we're doing is by the book. You have some of the most brilliant minds in the legal world, you know, telling us where we're going and, and how we can do things. We have a ton of, you know, I call it the MSP power, which is MSP recovery law firm. You know, we have the power of MSP behind us, you know, in the legal aspect of it all, you know, making sure everything is going well and, and, and everything we're doing is proper. You know, every, anything that we have to do, there's a process. You know, things are not done without a process in life. And that's what everyone needs to understand, too, is that, you know, we're, we're going through the process to make sure everything is done right. You know, we're not just doing things barbarically. You know, that, that, that's part of what happens. And some of these guys, you know, touching upon, a, um, I don't even know who that guy was from before. You know, he started going at us on Twitter with the Billy, the Billy guy and the uh, Izzy guy. You know, it's just a shame that some of these guys that, that apparently have, you know, a ton of love for the University of Miami that they say that they do. And all they do is, you know, pretty much bashing different things. And, you know, I, I don't think that's the right thing to do for the community. Um, I don't think that's the right thing to do. You know, I was always taught, you know, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. And especially don't speak from a place of misinformed, you know, misinformed, because that's just not, you know, it's it's actually shooting everybody in the foot. So, you know, I think that all the excitement through the, through, through the Keynes family has been, you know, one of a kind. You know, I don't see that excitement anywhere else in the country. 
I think this is the the mecca of uh, is this is soon going to be the mecca of, of of collegiate sports again, and I think we're all very excited to get it there. And and just look just just look at uh just look at how nice our campus is and how beautiful the weather is here. There's a lot of intangibles just that the city of Miami brings to the table, and it's extremely exciting to have some of the top talent, you know, getting finally getting what they deserve and and, and coming to Miami and, and it being back on the big stage. So you know, Mario is, a, is an outstanding football coach. And there's some outstanding people at the university that have done a great job in, in getting them here and, and, and making sure we're building this, you know, brick by brick. And, and, and I think that, you know, the Dan Radakovich hire is, is phenomenal. He knows what he's doing when it comes to all to, to everything that we need. And you're going to see a total makeover, you know, and, and, and that's what's exciting to me as a former athlete. Okay, John, Alex, Johnny, thank you so much for going inside the lines with us today. I want to thank Drew Rosenhaus. Uh, Malky Kawa from First Round Management for joining us. Thanks to you to Dan Lambert for coming on the show as well. It's exciting times for the University of Miami uh, athletic program, for the community in general. Um, these guys are certainly doing their part to make a lot of lives better. And thank you to everybody for joining us today. We'll see you next time, everybody.